And tonight we're talking about immigration and the law. We'd love to hear from you. Our number 855 law 1955. Brett Pouncey with us this evening uh, to answer your question. Understand that Carla from Pinson is joining us. Carla, we are glad that you stayed up late with us tonight. How can we help? Well, I just had a question. I know that uh, I have friends and family members from Mexico okay. and some of them would get paid $10 a day to work in Mexico and would like to help some people connect with farmers. But how much does it cost the farmer to get a visa for someone to work on their farm? And if I can get that connection, I think it's a H-2A visa, but I just want to know what is it going to cost the farmer to do that? Such a great question. Mm -hmm. Well, the first thing is um, the farmer needs to speak to the immigration lawyer letting them know what his needs or her needs are okay. and there is a process that the farmer has to go through depending on who they're hiring what field they're hiring what type of farming and there's a process that even before one can look toward a foreign worker there has to be what they call a posting a posting at a, at a prevailing wage showing that there are no qualified U.S. citizen workers who are able to do the job or willing to do the job. And then once you pass that barrier, then one looks toward the foreign worker. In terms of the price, it's always best to talk to the person who's looking to hire the foreign national worker and be able to deal directly with the farmer because of the needs, the specificities, and also the number of workers that they're looking for. But Carla, that is a great question. And there I know are plenty of qualified workers, both here and in other countries, depending on the demand and also the need from the farmer. But um, now, Carla mentioned the H-2A. Um, there's, an, there's, an, there's an H visa, which um, can be either seasonal, but they're or temporary, typically the workers will come in for a six month period of time, mm -hmm. work. If they need to stay, they can apply to extend it while they're here. But oftentimes they come, the, the workers will come in during specific seasons. There are actually people that had worked, they would start out in the southern part of the United States in Florida, mm -hmm. working in citrus. And after the citrus season passed, they would migrate north some would work in South Alabama. A lot would work in the Sand Mountain, Blunt County area in tomatoes. Interesting. Now, um, so Brett, can, can a farmer get in touch with a lawyer like you and say, listen, I, this is what I would like to do, and you help them through that process? Absolutely. Um, okay. we'll speak to them, find out what their needs are, and try to tailor that to what is available under the visa laws that exist here in the United States. Um, for jobs like this, one doesn't do it 365 days a year. It's kind of like there's um, an open window, sort of like I don't necessarily equate um, bringing someone into the country to hunting, but you know, in the state of Alabama, you have the various seasons, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there are also sort of the various seasons um, to be able to apply for a certain number of visas that are available and then when they're all used up, you wait until the next season. And Britt, you're talking about visas uh, with Carla. Uh, Connor mentioned something called a K-1 mm -hmm. visa a moment ago, and I don't know what that is. Tell us what a K-1 visa a K -1 is. A K-1 visa is known as a fiancé visa. And you heard Connor mention that he met his wife, or wannabe wife, right. soon to be wife we hope, uh, fiancé, on a cruise ship, and would like to get her here and mention the K-1 visa process. The K-1 visa is where you apply for your fiancé in a foreign country. The Department of State vets that person. You show, along with your fiancé, that your relationship is a valid, has a valid basis. You document it properly. Mm -hmm. You do background checks in your country of origin. If you worked on a cruise ship, obviously, um, you know, they will have a, an extensive record of having worked there. And then one goes for a, an interview at the consulate of their country of origin. And if that visa is granted, they come into the country, 
with a visa stamp, and they have 90 days with which to consummate the marriage. Okay. I know a lot of people are familiar with the television show 90 Day Fiance. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. That's basically the premise of that show is are you going to be compatible for those 90 days? And if so, you marry. Yeah. If not, you don't. Okay. Hopefully, in Connor's situation and in you know the majority of my clients' situation, we yes. don't have that similar kind of drama. Yes. So we yes. need Connor to have his wedding pan plans in place, Connor, yes. Yes. when she gets here. You got to get yes. this thing done Absolutely. quickly. Wow. Absolutely. This is just such great it information, is. just such powerful nuggets for folks to know.